I think all of us remember you. 14, the youngest ever to win a gold medal, media darling, part of the Magnificent Seven, right? The first American team to win gold at the Olympics. But we didn't really know everything that was going on, did we? No, you know, there was a lot of things that um, I kept inside for fear of retribution. I was, a, I was scared of a lot of things, but I also had this dream of Olympic gold, and I wanted to live up to that expectation that I also placed on myself. That was a dream of mine since I was nine years old, and, and I wanted to get there, and I wasn't going to let anything stand in my, my way. So my book is a lot of the untold stories of my life. Why did you want to write the book? I felt that I could use my voice to spark a positive change bigger than gymnastics and bigger than myself because I think a lot of people and parents don't realize what, it, uh, what goes on at the elite level of a sport and I think it's a cautionary tale in some aspects because it teaches the parents to, wait a second, let's question the coach a little bit. I'm not saying there aren't great coaches because there are, but you cannot surrender full, you know, full control to the coach because your children need to have an open line of communication with you and you have to understand the philosophies of the coaches and what they're doing to your child in the gym because a lot of times you're not there. You don't know and children are afraid to speak up. So if we can, as parents, encourage children to talk to their parents and parents to talk to their children and the coaches, we have to understand what's going on behind closed doors when you're not there. Is that what happened to you? I mean, were you afraid of your coaches, one of them? Bella Caroli, known around the world, were you afraid? Absolutely. He's six feet tall and I was four foot four, 70 pounds, and intimidated because they would use emotional, um, and they, they hit me in a lot of personal and emotional places. They would humiliate me about my weight and, you know, for a small child, a prepubescent teenager, those humiliation and intimidation tactics made me afraid but yet I still wanted to, to do well in the gym. I wanted to please them. And I think as a child, we all try to please our parents or our coaches or our teachers. And uh, sometimes they're abusing their power to these children. You must have mixed feelings then as you watch a group of women looked at as some of the best gym, gymnasts we've ever sent to an Olympic Games getting ready for London. Do you hope they're speaking up and taking care of themselves like you feel like you might not have been able to do when you well, were 14? I would hope that they have an open line with their personal coaches of communication. I think it's, um, it's, it's gonna take a little time because when you're in the sport, you're afraid for backlash. You're afraid for if you speak up, will they not help put me on an Olympic team? And a lot of times it should be merit-based, but there's a lot of politics and it's a business. and uh, a lot of coaches are not open to that dialogue. They don't want to talk about that stuff and they want to pretend it doesn't exist. But I think with my story and perhaps it will inspire others to come forward and maybe there will be change and they, this will encourage athletes to know that it's okay to have a voice. So as a mom of two, if your son or daughter says, Mom, I want to be a gymnast, will you say, choose something else, please? <laughs> They're already gymnasts. They are. Gymnastics is the greatest sport in the world, and it's never, ever been about the sport. I will support the sport always, and I just want to make sure that the children are having a healthy and, and good experience. I want their emotional and, and physical well-being to be placed first and not have this mentality of win at all costs, doesn't matter if it hurts the child. I'm against that, and I think most parents would be.